Kia ora folks, welcome along to another episode of ProGear Features. Today's episode is all about the Leica SL2. So the new addition to the Leica SL series has a few major upgrades. We've got a 47 megapixel sensor in there, a whole lot of new focus points, 255 in fact, and uh, some design changes to the body that have made it a bit more ergonomic. The new body design features new rounded off edges and extends the Lux leather grip further around the body covering the front face as well as the sides and back, making the camera slightly easier to hold. It's also a nice aesthetic choice from Leica making the overall look extra premium. There's additional customizable buttons on the front and the hub atop the camera is also slightly larger, perhaps to accommodate the updated 5.76 million dot viewfinder and the addition of in-body stabilisation. The top plate design remains relatively unchanged other than the buttons are now black and fully customizable to various settings you can find in the menu. Around the back there's been a few significant changes in the button layout with Leica opting to sync up with the three button design found on their M rangefinder models. Along with this Leica has added a larger 3.2 inch screen with a higher resolution of 2.1 million dots. No flippy screen though which may have been helpful given the updated video specs which we'll talk about later. The SL2 now has dual UHS-2 card slots which will be a welcome upgrade from the original SL allowing for faster shooting with the new 20 frames per second burst rate and high spec video. Camera connectivity has also been upgraded with the addition of USB-C for fast transfer as well as the ability to charge the camera while it's in use. The camera has also gained Bluetooth connectivity along with Wi-Fi for better integration with the Leica Photos app. So there's a lot of great videos out there already on this camera, so as we do at ProGear, we're just going to focus on the photography element. One great advantage of the camera is that it is, of course, a part of the L-mount family of cameras, which share a common lens mount, giving the system a wide range of options in focal lengths, aesthetic, and price. The SL2 also supports M-mount lenses with the native Leica adapter. In this shoot, we decided to keep it simple using three standard focal length lenses, the native Leica Sumalux SL 50mm 1.4 aspherical and the Panasonic S-Pro 50mm 1.4 for the photo section and the Leica M Sumicron F2 for video. Alright, so for the shoot today we've brought in Coco May from Climb Models. Big shout outs to them again and uh, yeah, let's kick it off. The concept of this shoot is to both test the camera out and also to see how the different lenses compare in the look of the photos. First up we shot with the Sumalux SL 50mm 1.4, we're also using some external lighting as an added aesthetic element. The camera feels great to shoot and if you're like me and like a bit of weight, you'll appreciate the solid feel of the SL2. Next up we chucked on the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 50mm to see how they compare. Jumping into Lightroom now to just compare a few photos from the shoot. Uh, we got the Leica set up here on the left and the Lumix on the right. Uh, just so you know, we shot them both at the same settings, which was ISO 50, uh, shutter speed at 250 of a second, and of course, wide open at f1.4. So on this first set here, immediately the thing you notice about the Leica lens is this wild swirly bokeh. And uh, over here on the Lumix, uh, not so wild in character, but still a nice soft focus. And uh, in the background, those uh, beautiful bokeh balls popping through the trees there. Also with the Lumix, the highlights seem to be uh, rendered a lot more brighter, whereas the Leica is much more contrasty. Jumping over to the next set here, much the same thing with the Leica, that big swirly bokeh and high contrast on the Lumix, those highlights shining through much brighter. Just zooming in here to check out the sharpness of the lenses. Both of them pretty on point, some nice detail there, but we're gonna have to give it to the Lumix on this one, however, it is a new lens and uh, probably has much better autofocus IQ. And then these next ones moved in a little closer here. Some of the fall off from that bokeh gone on the Leica, but uh, again, much the same thing. Got to give the sharpness to the Lumix. 
nice contrasty image to the Leica. So overall, they're both highly capable lenses and I guess it's really about the aesthetic you prefer. So one of the new features of this camera is of course 5K video, shooting at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. We've chucked a 50M Simicron on there and we're going to test out the capabilities. This lens is known for its optical beauty and super sharpness so it seemed like a good fit. The camera now shoots 5K video using the full sensor, although keep in mind this is in the 4 to 3 aspect ratio. I'm sure there's some applications where 4 to 3 is ideal, but we've opted to crop to 16 by 9. While the 5K video adds some additional resolution, it's probably more helpful for reframing in 4K. We're not sure if many people will be using this as a serious video camera, but it is missing a flippy screen, which definitely would have been helpful for shooting this video. Nevertheless, we did like the colours and the overall aesthetic. That's it for this episode of ProGear Features. Like and subscribe, and check out the description below for links to the gear we use during the shoot, as well as where to find ProGear online. Kakitiano, see you next time!